Terrain. For wargamers, it's necessary. It's part of the game's rules. Yet, for D&D, it's usually considered more optional. But I think it can be just as valuable. When it comes to wargaming, terrain is used mechanically. For cover and line of sight. And it does work the same in D&D. Things like half cover and three quarters cover are mechanics rules as written. But how often do we actually get to use them? Today, I want to fix that. At least for my table. These carriages are awesome, print-in-place models by EC3D, one of my favourite sculptors when it comes to FDM printables for the tabletop. And no, these are not typical terrain pieces like trees, rocks, and ruins, but I think they can be just as versatile, and way more fun. I want to introduce more interesting terrain to my games, but I don't want to paint a bunch of single-use terrain that will be lucky to see the table more than once. And while it is cool every so often to create those big terrain centerpieces for boss fights, you get those every 30 sessions. These carriages will be used way more than that. When the party is ambushed on the road, or even if they're only resting for the night, their carriage would still be nearby, on the battlefield, as an obstacle. I want these painted up fast, but that doesn't mean I'm going to rush them. They might be the size of, say, 8 characters, but I'm going to try and spend the same amount of time as I normally would for one mini. About an hour and a half each should do the job. To achieve this goal, I need to keep things simple. Minimal effort for maximum effect. To start, this will mean two quick layers of dry brushing over the brown primer. Each pass of brown brighter than the one before it. And just like that, with two quick layers, we have a great canvas to build upon. These carriages have gorgeously sculpted decorative roofs, and I'm going to paint each one a little differently. For the first carriage here, and its irregular tiled roof, it gets a more traditional paint job. A base coat of basilisk red, followed by some highlights of wyvern fury, and finally a dry brush of ancient stone. This is a tried and true method for tile roofs, and looks great applied to this muted red tone of the brick. For the second carriage, however, with its fish scale tiles, I'm not sure what you'd call these, I'm going to try for a base coat of wolf grey, followed by a coat of speed paint. This mix is 50-50, Barrow Wolf Blue and Grim Black. And then a final dry brushing of that same wolf grey base colour. Speed Paint, famous for picking out details and sinking into recesses, will accentuate any layer lines visible on the print, but it did give a nice clean recess shade. And by finishing with the dry brushing back over those flat areas of the tile, I was able to remove majority of the unsightly layer lines, making for another awesome roof. When it comes to terrain, even a simple paint job with common techniques can do a really great job. Each of these roofs took maybe 15 minutes if you include drying time, and yet they look awesome. Something else that looks awesome? Snap tiles. Snap tiles are my very own 3D printable dungeon tiles, designed so that any wall can be used with any floor, making them more modular than many others and easier to store. Snap tiles series 2, City Streets, is up on Kickstarter now and it only has a few days left. So if you want to pick up the new files or grab SnapTiles Caves and Dungeons at a discounted price, you can find the link in the description below. Next up is some of the detailing, specifically the curtains. These carriages all have what I can only assume to be curtains or cloth banners draped along their exteriors. I assume these might be used to denote the family or the house that owns the carriage, or simply be used to cover the cart when everyone is resting for the night. Either way, each carriage is once again getting a unique color. For the red-roofed carriage, it will be getting red curtains, using the same colours as the roof tiles themselves, but they will be highlighted up with a slightly brighter red, rather than the warm grey I used on the roof. I'm doing this because the cloth elements would likely be a little more saturated than the sun-soaked roof tiles. The blue carriage, however, is going to be getting curtains that are much different to its roof. A rich magenta should really help set this cart apart. You see the red carriage has a bunch of goodies on top that will give it some colour variation, so this blue carriage gets some extra love in the paint job itself, and some complementary colours should give it that extra oomph. Our final carriage, which until this point has just been wooden textures, will be getting some nice turquoise and purple accents, along with some beige for the classic performing arts symbols adorning its roof. Because this cart doesn't have a colourful roof like the others, I want to push the colours on the rest of the model, to make sure it looks like it fits in with the others and has just as much visual interest. Man, these are looking awesome, and they've taken no time at all. Just goes to show how far a nice sculpt really goes when it comes to painting terrain. All you need is a simple paint job to really pull out all the detail that the model has to offer. I'm going to be using pretty standard painting techniques on the various packages across these carts. 
by utilizing the high level of pigmentation of Fnatic paints and watering them down so that they flow nicely, even along all of these FDM layer lines. Picking out those details with some simple highlighting, edge highlighting on the belt straps, and something of an overbrush meets wet blend on the other details. For this caravan, and more so for my homebrew D&D world, I would like to believe that the higher quality or weight-bearing carriages might be equipped with some metallic banding for the exterior of the wheels, but I made sure not to do this on all of the models. A bright metallic becomes quite a focal point among these more muted paint jobs, and some of the carts can just have wooden wheels. Finally, there were a few other metallic areas that got the same treatment of plate mail metal followed by a wash of dark tone. And just like that, we're done. I can see it now, a dirt road battle map in a grassy field, the party's campfire flickering away, and just as they all fall asleep, a lumbering monster comes out of the darkness into range of the firelight, and as the party all awaken there's nowhere to hide except behind their carriage. In the past, I have been the type of game master to just mention in passing that a party's carriage would be nearby when I pull out a battle map, and then promptly forget to let them use it in combat. But that is no more. These carriages will be used time and time again, campaign after campaign. What do you reckon? Would having some more interesting terrain like this encourage your group to utilize it more? Or is this simply not an issue at your table one way or the other? Regardless, at the end of the day, whether it actually impacts my players' decisions or not is ultimately a mute point. By just simply having some models that match the descriptions of cool terrain pieces like this, it helps to bring a D&D battlefield to life and provides a more fun and immersive experience at the table. And it definitely beats a square of cardboard or an outline scribbled in marker. But I'm sure at some tables, even those would do just fine. Subscribe to see some more cool D&D related 3D printing and painting. Like if you liked, and as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.